All right. Hello. Happy Monday, everybody. So we're a few minutes behind. I was just on an ADU design webinar learning about some best design best practices. And so today on our zero energy home talk, just go over foundations. So typically they're are a couple of foundation types that I see in most new construction. They are slab, a slab, like slab on grade, or if it's a basement slab, I don't see basements as much. So, but, so it's typically slab on grade and then also crawl space, which have a frame floor and a, a space underneath it. So as far as energy efficiency goes and net zero energy, with a slab on grade, it kind of depends. So for all all slab on grades, you should, you should ideally insulate underneath them. Whether or not you have a radiant in-floor heating system, but especially if you have that. So if you are having um, hydronic heat in your slab, you should insulate to at least R15. Better would be R20. So what does that look like? You have to use a type of insulation material that can withstand the weight of the concrete. So typically I see uh, foam blue board, so extruded polystyrene underneath, which has an R value of 5 per inch. So for R15, that would be 3 inches, and for R20, that would be 4 inches. So you can do that in different combinations of two two inch layers or you know if it comes i'm not sure if it comes in three inch but a two inch layer and a one inch layer so depending on what your r value is for an unheated slab so just a regular slab on grade you can do less than that we in our house we did two inches so r10 of in, of insulation underneath the slab so since we're not doing heat in there and then our stem walls, so the part, so that's just the part that's underneath the, the slab thickness. And then the stem walls of the foundation, so around the perimeter of the slab, those are made out of the ICF blocks. So there's two and a half inches on the inside of the wall and two and a half inches on the outside. So we have a continuous insulation on the, from the inside of the stem wall underneath the slab inside the stem wall. And then the footing is underneath that. There is one part of our slab that we could not insulate under, which is the what, the bearing wall for the stairwell and the floor up above that. So we just have a short section that we were unable to insulate underneath because it needed to be on native ground that was solid and not on the foam. At least that's what our engineer had told us. So if you know more about that kind of thing where you could possibly insulate underneath a bearing surface, let, let us know. So our exterior stem walls are, the footings are on native ground. So the bottom of the footing does not have any insulation underneath. It's just touching the bare ground. And so this really, the purpose of the insulation is again to resist heat flow, so that thermal resistance. And the the more insulation is, the better. It helps that conduction through the slab into the ground. Let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else for slabs. Some I see some new homes that will just insulate the stem wall. That is code where you can insulate the inside of the stem wall and not under the slab if there's no heating in the slab. So that is really looking at stopping the re resistance, the heat transfer from underneath the slab area to the outside. But it's I don't and I don't know the status like the actual facts on this, but it seems to me like it would be maybe not quite as effective at slowing the conduction down as if you just had underneath insulation all the way underneath the slab. 
So then I'm just going to show you a picture and just show you her. Uh, so this is that detail. This is our first floor plans. So these are our, our ICF walls. So that's, that is the insulation and that's the inside. That's the concrete of the ICF. So insulation, concrete, insulation, the stash line is where the footing extends. And then here there is, that is the thickened slab area. So the slab goes here so that we had to stop the insulation around where this where the thick and slab area is and this is the bearing wall for the floor above and so the stairs are going here so this is our little area that we don't have any insulation and then we have a note here so four inch thick slab there's rebar in there over r10 rigid insulation over 10 mil vapor barrier over five inches of three quarter inch crust minus compacted to 95 percent dry density so we did both insulation and a vapor barrier because it just gives us a little bit extra protection from, from potential moisture flow through the slab. It's, I have read that it's also okay to use your rigid insulation and tape the seams. And that would be a, a, an effective way that's a little bit more cost effective to make sure you have a vapor barrier underneath your slab, but we just did both as an extra precaution and it maybe cost us a hundred and yeah, like a little over a hundred dollars more. So we used, yeah, a 10 mil vapor barrier. And the way we layered it was, yeah, exactly what they said. So we did, I think, I actually can't even remember. I'll have to go back at my photos. Uh, because some people put the vapor barrier down on top of the gravel and some go on top of the foam. So I, I'm i trying to remember what we did. I'll have to look at pictures. It's too long ago. And then here's a detail. So here's a detail of that thickened slab area. So that this part and this part is where we had to dig down a little bit more. And then that's this is sits on native ground and then this is crushed rock under here for a little bit and then we added this detail doesn't actually have the foam in here but this is a slab and that extends and then we had the foam underneath there okay so the other foundation type so slabs are really air airtight and i see them in high, the higher performing houses that are more that do better on the blower door tests have our slab on grade. And so it's just a better way of air sealing that, or it's easier too. So, okay. So crawl spaces. So typically a crawl space, you have concrete stem walls with uh, on top of footings, and then you have maybe two to three feet, maybe less, maybe more, depending on the site and it could be sloped underneath there. And then you have a framed floor on top of that. So anytime you have a framed floor, the along the perimeter, there's there's a lot of wood connection joints. So on top of a, a stem wall, there's typically a mud sill plate that's like a pressure treated material. So there's that. And then on top of that is you have your rim joist or band joist. So it's your perimeter joist that goes all the way around the footprint. And then you have your joists running in between the the rim joists and then you have your subfloor and then you build your wall on top of that so there's a lot of from the outside there's a lot of different places uh different seams in there where air can potentially leak into the space and so it's really important to make sure you can try to figure out ways that are that work for you to seal those so that could include caulk or foam or i've been seeing some like kind of like weather like like yeah like kind of foam weather stripping or or rubber or something that has a little bit of compression just to really get that area sealed and so 
you can do that by with your exterior sheathing material you can make sure that is well sealed to that whole transition area of mud sill rim joists and subfloor and then bottom plate and studs so if that gets really sealed then that can help you minimize air leaks into the house at that level and then underneath the framing you're going to have insulation in there and most likely you're you'll have plumbing and duct duct work in there if you have a ducted furnace and so that crawl spaces are typically vented so there's air that can move through there and so if you have a vented crawl space and you have ductwork and plumbing that has to enter the rest of the house somewhere in different openings to the floor then if you'll need, need to make sure you want to make make sure they're air te- air tight so that means sealing them in some way and and just trying to in general minimize how many penetrations are going through the floor so that's one thing a lot of people just think about insulating their floor but you have to make sure you also do a really diligent job of air sealing because otherwise air is going to move through that space, especially in a vented crawl space, which is generally what is getting built because you don't, in case water and moisture gets in that space, it can more easily dry out. So from a durability and health perspective, that is a better system. So I think that is it for now there are some some builders will do conditioned crawl spaces so that means they're they are not vented and that they have insulation on the stem walls kind of like the slab style so the stem walls will be insulated and then the floor and then they'll have a vapor barrier on top of the soil which actually crawl spaces any kind of crawl space needs to have a vapor barrier on top of the soil but usually conditioned crawl spaces will have one that's maybe a 10 mil instead of a 6 mil. And you have to make sure the, the seams are taped so you can prevent radon gases or potential radon gases and just other things that are coming up through the soil from entering into the house. So you have that as your primary barrier. And then you have any holes that are being made by ducting and plumbing coming through the floor. Those get sealed. That's your secondary seal. Okay, I think that's it. And I will be back next week with another, I think we'll talk about walls and next week, next Monday. And then Wednesday, I'll have another Healthy Homes and Home Performance. And Saturday, this week, we are doing a DIY, I believe, on Mason B houses. So stay tuned. I will hopefully see more of you next time. And always feel free to comment and on my page and let me know if there's anything you are interested in learning. All right. Bye for now.